DuPont presents the Cavalcade of America. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the Cavalcade of America, sponsored by DuPont, makers of better things for better living through chemistry. Tonight we are privileged to present the distinguished stars of the American theater, Alfred Lunt and Lynn Fontan, in a new Christmas miracle play written for our times by Stephen Vincent Benet. It is called A Child is Born. <laughs> I'm your narrator. It's my task to say just where and how things happen in our play. It's an old task, old as the human heart, old as those bygone players in their art who, in old days when faith was nearer earth, played out the mystery of Jesus' birth in hall or village green or market square for all who chose to come and see them there. So we tonight, who are your players too, ask to tell that self and tale to you. The time is time. The place is anywhere. The voices speak to you across the air to say that once again a child is born. A child is born. I pray you all give us your audience and hear this matter with reverence. There is a town where men and women live as people do in troubled times. Times when the world is shaken. There is an inn. A woman sings there in the early morning. There shall be born a child, a child born of woman, and yet undefiled. Sing a herald, sing a herald. Now what do you say? Singing again. I told you not to sing. I'm sorry, I forgot. Forgot. That's fine. That's wonderful. That answers everything. The country's occupied. We have no country. You've heard of that, perhaps. You've seen their soldiers, haven't you? You know just what can happen to our sort of people once there's a little trouble. Answer me. I've seen, I know, but... But, oh, la, 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 sometime I think your ways will drive me mad. Is it your business what King Herod does? Is it your place to sing against King Herod? Do you pretend to know the ins and outs of politics and why the great folk do the thing they do? And why have to bear them? Because it's we, we, we who have to bear them. First and last and always in every country and in every tongue. They bring us like dry wheat between the stones. Don't you know that? I know that somehow kings should not be wicked and grind the people down. I know that kings like Herod should not be... All right. All right, I'm not denying that. I'm reasonable enough. I know the world. It's a bad world, but it must last our time. Herod is Herod, but my end's my end. I do the best I can. I pay my taxes here in this conquered and forsaken land. And as for all your fine, rebellious souls who hide in the hills and stir up trouble, call themselves prophets too, and prophesy that something new is coming to the world. The Lord knows what. Well, it's a long time coming. And meanwhile, we're the wheat between the stones. Something must come. Believe it if you choose, but meantime, if we're clever, we can live and even thrive a little. Clever wheat that slips between the grinding stones and grows into the good, the profitable grain. At least, if you will not sing subversive songs to other people, but your poor old husband who loves you still, in spite of all your fancies, and always will. Come, wife. I've got some news. I didn't mean to be so angry with you. Give us a kiss. I couldn't help the child. I know you think of that this time of year. He's my son, too, and I think of him. I couldn't help his dying. No, husband, no. He stretched his little arms to me and died. And yet I had the priest, the high priest, too. I didn't spare the money. No, my husband. I'm a barren bow. I think and sing... And I'm a barren bow. Oh, come, come, come. The fault is mine. I had my joyous season, my season of full ripening and fruit. 
And then the sound of the aching breast. I thought I would have children. I was wrong. But my flesh aches to think I do not have them. I did not mean to speak of this at all. I do not speak of it. I will forget. Not sing at all. It was long past and gone. Tell me your news. Is it good news? That's the prefect comes to dinner here tonight with all his officers. Oh, yes, I know. The enemy, of course, the enemy. But someone has feed them. And they are pay. Cash. On the nail. Yes. Good. I thought you'd say so. Oh, we'll make no great profit. Not tonight. I've seen the bill of fare they asked to me. Quails in midwinter. Well, we'll give them quails and charge them for them, too. You know, the trick. Yes. They must be well served. I'll care for that. The honest innkeeper, the thoughtful man. Oh, do not spoil my servants with largesse, your worship. And he won't. He pinches pennies. But once he's come here, he will come again, and we shall live, not die, and put some coin, some solid enemy and lovely coin under the heart. Uh Spoil the Egyptian. Mm -hmm. Ah, what's that? I'll go. Maids aren't up yet, lazy bones. A minute, just a minute. It's early yet. You needn't beat the door down. This is an honest inn. Oh, uh, good morning. Hail Caesar. Are you keeper of this inn? Yes, sir. Orders from the prefect. No other guests will be entertained at your inn tonight after sundown. The prefect wishes all the rooms to be at the disposal of his guests. Sir, when the prefect first commanded me, there was a party of my countrymen engaged for a small room. You'll hear no noise, no noise at all. This is the prefect's feast, the Saturnalia. You've heard your notes. Yes, sir. Yes, indeed, sir. Well, see that carried out. No other guests. Hail Caesar. Hail Caesar. Oh, that's pleasant. All the rooms at the disposal of the prefect. No other guests. Remember, no other guests. I will remember. Do so. It's an order. Now, about the quail. You make the sauce. That's the important thing. A crow can taste like quail with a good sauce. You have your herbs. Yeah. Well, then, begin. Begin. It's morning and we haven't too much time. Sarah, Leah, where are those lazy servants? Leah and Sarah, come and help your mistress. I'll rouse the fools. There's work to do today. The day passed, and night fell on the town, silent and still and cold. The houses lay huddled and dark beneath the watching stars, and only the inn windows streamed with light. What's the prefect saying up there? Gentlemen, men of Rome, mindful of Rome's historic destiny, and of our good friend, King Herod, who has chosen an alliance with Rome rather than a useless struggle, keep them under with a firm hand. Oh, what was he saying up there? I don't know. I don't know the big words. The soldiers... You and your soldier. Oh, he's not so bad. He brought me a trinket, see? You and your Roman trinkets. I hate serving them. I'd like to spit in their cups each time I serve them. Oh, you wouldn't dare. Oh, wouldn't I, though? Here, here. What's this? Why are you standing idle? They're calling for more wine. Let Leah serve them. She likes their looks. Sarah. Yes, mister. Please, Sarah. We've talked like this so many times. Very well, mistress. But let her go first. Get up the stairs, you little soul comfort. I hope he pinches you. Mistress, it's not my fault. Miss Sarah, oh, go, go, both of them. You go, Sarah. You ought to beat the girl. She's insolent and shows it. You can't be too hard on her. Her father's dead. And her brother's in the hills. And yet she used to be a merry child. I can remember her when she was merry a long time since. You always take their side, and yet you think a self-respecting inn could have some decent and well-mannered maids. No such luck. Sullens and sluts. A lot of them. Give me a stool. I'm tired. Say, uh, 30 dinners and double for the prefect and the wine. Best, second best, and common. Hmm, not bad, but then... Why do you sit there staring at the fire? So silent and so waiting and so still. I do not know... I'm waiting. Waiting? For what? I do not know. 
for something new and strange, something I've dreamt about in some deep sleep, truer than any waking, heard about long ago, so long ago, in sunshine and the summer grass of childhood, when the sky seemed so near. I do not know its shape, its will, its purpose. And yet all day its will has been upon me, and there is light in it, and fire, and peace, newness of heart, and strangeness like a sword, and all my body trembles under it, and yet I do not know. You're tired, my dear. Well, we shall sleep soon. No, I'm not tired. I'm expectant as a runner before a race, a child before a feast day, a woman at the gates of life and death, expectant for us all. For all of us who live and suffer on this little earth with such small brotherhood, something begins, something is full of change and sparkling stars. And yet, I cannot read it. Yes, I wait and strive and cannot find it. Can't come in. I don't care who they are. We have no room. Close the door. Well, is this the inn, sir? We are travelers in this place and call. May we enter? Who is it? Just a pair of country people, a woman and a man. I'm sorry for them. Mm -hmm. My wife and I are weary. May we come in? I'm sorry, my good men. We have no room tonight. The prefect's orders... No room at all? Oh, no, it's not my fault. You look like honest and well-meaning folk, and nobody likes turning trade away, but I'm not my own master. Not tonight. It may be in the morning. Wait. Must you mix in this? Wait. Good sir, the enemy are in our house, and he... Oh. I did not see your wife. I did not know. Her name is Mary. She is near her time. Yes, yes. Go get a lantern. Quickly. What? Quickly. I once had a child. We have no room. We have no room. That's true. And it would not be right not here. Not now. Not with those men whose voices you can hear are voices of death and iron. King Herod's voices. That are the friendly beasts. What am I saying? There is... We have a stable at the inn. Safe from the cold at least. And if you choose, you shall be very welcome. We share it. Gladly, and with great joy. The lantern, have you? Nay, I will take it. I can see the path. Come. Well, I suppose that you must have your way, and any other night. They're decent people, or seem to be. He has his arm about her, smoothing out the roughness of the path for her. Although they are not even people of our town, as I suppose you know. So rough a path to tread with weary feet. Men, there's frost upon the air tonight. I'm cold, or... Yes, I must be cold. That's it. That's it now, to be sure. Come, shut the door. Something begins, begins, starlit and sunlit. Something walks abroad in flesh and spirit and fire. Something is loose to change the shaken world. Deepens. 
The stars march in the sky. The prefect's men are gone. The inn is quiet. But in the street outside... A star shone over us so bright, we left our flock to seek its light. How can you sing so late? How can you sing so late? I don't sing. Wait, I'll go the window for you. Why are you short? The shepherds from the hills. Shepherds? Yes, mister. They are crooks and shades. The tattered cloaks are ragged on their backs. Their hands are blue and steamy with the cold. Yes, they all seem drunken. Not with wine, but with good news. Yes, they just shine with it. Cold and so late, poor creatures. Call them in. The prefect men are gone. Ah, the the master. He's dozing. Do as I tell you. Come in. Come in. Tarry a while and rest. We cannot stay. We follow the great star. Where did they go? Did they not stay with us? Yes, they did not even look on me. They looked ahead. They had gone toward the stable, the stable of our inn. The stable of our inn. And they are gone. Aye, gone, but... Mistress, Mistress, do you hear? Hear what? Hear what? The tread of seeds on the hard ground, iron hooked and being clear. And the leader comes from out the east. I've never seen such things. And so, these are great lords, great kings with strange and memorable beasts, and crowns upon their heads. What's that? What's that? Lords, nobles, kings here in Bethlehem, in our poor town? What fortune, oh, what fortune stands from the window there, you silly girl. I'll speak to them. My gracious noble lord, worthy and mighty king, our humble inn is honored by your high nobility. Come in, come in. We fire and beds and wine. Come in, come in. Tarry a while and rest. We cannot stay. We follow the bright star. <laughs> I do not understand it. They're gone. They did not even look at me or pause, so there's no other end. They follow the poor shepherds to the stable. They would not tarry with us. No, not one. And yet... Peace, husband, you know well enough why none would tarry with us, and so do I. I lay a while in sleep, and a voice said to me, Gloria, Gloria, in excelsis Deo. The child is born, the child, the child is born. And yet I did not rise and go to him, though I had waited and expected long, for I was jealous that my child should die and her child live, and so I have my judgment, and it's just dreams. Were they dreams, the shepherds and the kings? Is it a dream, this glory that we feel streaming upon us, and yet not for us now, mistress? Mr. Tis my thought, not yours. You told me to the strangers in the stable and see they had all care, but I forgot. Mr. the thought was mine. You told me also, but I did not go. If there was any fault, wife, it was mine. I did not wish to turn them from my door, and yet I know I love the chink of money, love it too well, the good, sound, something coin. Love it, oh God, since I am speaking truth better than wife or fire or chick or child, better than country, better than good fame, would sell my people for it in the street, oh, for the price, but sell them. And there are many like me, and God pity us. God pity us indeed, for we are human, and not always see the vision when it comes, the shining change. Or if we see it, do not follow it because it's too hard, too strange, too new. And now I know that standing in this light will be half alive these many years, brooding on my own sorrow, my own pain. Life is not lost by dying. Life is lost minute by minute, day by dragging day, in all the thousand small, uncaring ways. 
the smooth, appeasing compromises of time which are King Herod and King Herod's men always and always. Life can be lost without vision, but not lost by death. Lost by not caring. Willing, going on beyond the ragged edge of fortitude to something more, something no man has seen. You, who love money, you who love yourself, you who love bitterness, and I who loved and loved and thought I could not love again, and all the people of this little town, rise up, the loves we had were not enough. Something is loose to change the shaken world, and with it, we must change. Now that's well said. Who speaks there? Who are you? Who? Oh, my name is Dismas. I'm a thief. You know, star, flea bitten sort of boy who haunts dark alleyways in any town, sleeps on a fruit sack, runs from the police, begs what he can, and borrows what he must. That's me. How did you get her? By the door, innkeeper. The cellar door. Lock upon old. I could pick locks like that with five. What have you taken? Nothing. I tried the stable first. Then your cellar I slipped in, crept up, rolled underneath the bench while all your honest facts were turned, and... and then... And then? Well, something happened. I don't know what. I didn't see your shepherds or your kings, but... In the stable, I did see the child. Just through a crack in the book, one moment's space. That's all that I can tell you. Is he for me as well? Is he for me? For you as well. Is he for all of us? There are so many of us worthy, mistress. Beggars who show their sores and ask for arms. Women cough their lungs out in the cold. Slaves. Oh, I've been one. Thieves and renegades who knife each other for a bit of bread, having no other way to get the bread. The vast sea of the wretched and the poor, whose murmur comes so faintly to your ears in this fine country. Has he come to all of us or just to you? To every man alive. I wish I could believe it. And if you did, no doubt you'd give up feeding. Gently, lady, gently. Feeding's my trade. It's the only trade I know. But if it were true, if he had really come to all of us, I'd say to all of us, then honest man or thief, I'd hang upon a cross for him. Would you? Well, I see I said something I'd like, something uncouth and bold and terrifying. Yet I'll tell you this. It won't be till each one of us is willing, not you, not me, but every one of us, to hang upon a cross for every man who suffers, starves, and dies. But there'll be no crosses and no tyrants, no Herods and no slaves. Well, it was pleasant thinking things might be so. So I'll say farewell. I've taken nothing. He was a fair child to look on. Wait. Why? What is it you see there by the window? The dawn. The common dawn. The ordinary, poor, and mortal day. The shepherds and the kings have gone away. The big angelic visitors are gone. He is alone. He must not be alone. I do not understand you, wife, nor I. Do you not see? Because I see at last. Business the thief is right. He comes to all of us. Or comes to none. We are the earth. His word must sow like wheat. And if it finds no earth, it cannot grow. We are his earth. The mortal and the dying, led by no star. The sullen and the slut, the thief, the selfish man, the barren woman. And yet, unless we go, his message fails. Will he bring peace? Will he bring brotherhood? He would bring peace. He would bring brotherhood, and yet he will be mocked at in the street. Will he slay King Herod and rule us all? He will not slay King Herod. He will die. There will be other Herods, other tyrants, great wars and ceaseless struggles to be free, not always one. These are sad tidings. No, yes. no. They're glad tidings of great joy, because he brings man's freedom in his hands. The thought, the wish, the dream of brotherhood, never and never wholly to be lost. The water and the bread of the oppressed, the stay and succor of the resolute, the harness of the valiant and the brave, the new word that has changed the shaken world. 
And though he die, his word shall grow like wheat. And every time a child is born in pain and love and freedom, hardly one, born and gone forth to help and raise mankind, there will be women with a right to say, Gloria, Gloria, in excelsis Deo, a child is born. Gloria, Gloria. Come, let us go. What can we bring him? What mortal gift? I have a ribbon. It's my prettiest. It's not much, but he might play with it. I have a little bell my father gave me. It used to make me merry. I've kept it. He may have it. My pocket's empty, my rags are bare. But I can sing to him. That's what I'll do. And if he needs a thief to die for him... Don't speak of dying. It's a nasty thing, nasty and cold. And I will give my gold. I say I'll give my gold. All of my gold, every round piece. Oh, do not look at me so judgingly with your child's candid eyes. I'm but a man. I will give all. Give all. Give all my heart. And I, my faith, through all the years and years, though I forget, though I am led astray, though after this I never see his face, I will give all my faith. Come. Let us go. We, the poor earth, but we, the faithful earth. Not yet the joyful, not yet the triumphant, but faithful, faithful to the end of time. Come. Come, all ye faithful, joyful and triumphant. Come ye. Oh, come ye to Bethlehem. Stephen Vincent Benet, who wrote A Child is Born, DuPont extends its warm thanks and deep appreciation for their contribution at this Christmas season on the Cavalcade of America. And to all our Cavalcade listeners, we extend our Christmas greeting, a greeting of peace on earth, goodwill toward men. Those words are as radiantly hopeful as ever in this bitter year of war, and as strong. So it is with hope and courage and abiding faith that the 200,000 men and women of DuPont join at this Christmas season with people of goodwill everywhere in each for the greatest gifts of all, victory and peace. Next week, ladies and gentlemen, the Cavalcade of America, sponsored by DuPont, will present Paul Muni in Eagle's Nest, a play about Garibaldi, the liberator who brought freedom to the Italian people a freedom which has since been snatched away from them by a ruthless dictator. Be with us again next week when the Cavalcade of America presents Paul Muni as Garibaldi. On tonight's program, the orchestra and original score by Arden Cornwell were under the direction of Don Brie. This is Clayton Collier sending best wishes from Dubai. <laughs> This program came to you from New York. This is the National Broadcasting Company. Mm-hmm.